Carl Schmierez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey and Daytona, Florida. So this is the next part in our lithium battery series. Uh, as a matter of fact, this bike here is one of the reasons I felt the need to make a video like this. 90% um, of the bikes that we have come in here with dual battery setups are not wired properly or not wired as efficiently or as safely as they could possibly be. This is an example of that. So in this series, we're going to go over um, how much current you can flow between two batteries, connect them together with wires or connecting them together with bus bars. I'll show you the different current flow of the different bus bars you could use, how easy it is to fabricate them yourself and how, most importantly, how to calculate your voltage needs. So for example, this bike has 7,000 watts in the tour pack. They have a battery under the seat and a battery under the tail. So they jumped battery one to battery two using four gauge wire, not even zero gauge wire. Then they hooked up the 7,000 watts worth of amplifiers down to the battery in the tail. So the batteries that are in this bike can only take an outrush current of 5,000 watts so he's got 10,000 watts worth of batteries, that's fine. But instead of splitting the load between the two batteries, they jump one battery to another battery and then all the audio equipment to the battery closest to the tour pack, which is not the right way. So of course he was having voltage issues and base amp was shutting off. So I'm gonna quickly go over how to properly wire. And this isn't even a competition level bike. This is a regular rider bike, parking lot pimp, really loud audio, good amount of bass, but um, He's got a 3,000 and two 2400s. Let me show you what we did. So in the tour pack, have 2400, 3,000, 2400. And as you can see, going into the four-way distribution block, we have two zero-gauge feeds. So that links both batteries together. What we did was the 3,000 runs directly to the battery under the seat. Then there's a zero-gauge wire linking this battery to the one under the tail. Then from under the tail, we go to the distribution block, which feeds the two 2400s. So the 3000 pulls off this battery, the two 2400s pull off that battery, and then both batteries are linked together into the distribution block. The reason you do it that way is all these amplifiers together exceed the current capacity of the one battery. So if you jump the two batteries together, and then you put the amplifiers on one battery, the load is never seen by the second battery. So you have to split the load between the two batteries or use bus bars between them and hook the amplifiers to the bus bars. Since there's one battery under the seat, one in the tail, you cannot link them both together with bus bars, so you have to do zero gauge runs to link them together. The zero gauge runs is to charge the batteries. The load is actually the amplifier hooked directly to the first battery, and these two amplifiers hooked directly to the second battery. Then you bring them together so they charge together. So that way, the two 2400s have a 5,000 watt battery and the 3000 has a 5,000 watt battery. Then they're linked together for a total of 10,000 watts of current capacity. But you can't go load to battery one to battery one, link to battery two, unless you do four zero gauge powers and four zero gauge grounds connecting the two batteries, which would be super, super difficult to do. Okay, here's a realistic setup that you would see in a SOS featherweight competition bike so in this theoretical mock-up we have battery in the tour pack battery under the seat two batteries under the tail so for current flow purposes we opted to go with bus bars and i'll explain why in a second um not saying that this will fit but this is in a perfect world best case scenario obviously this isn't going to fit under a stock tail so this would be for a bike that has a competition rear end setup um, with drop rail bags, but we have two limitless Nano V3s under the tail, one under the seat, and one in the tour pack. We have two 5000s. We have a 2400, and then we have an 800.4 for the tweeters. So we're only going over current flow. So we'd start here. So this is our bank of batteries for under the tail. Then we connect this bank to the battery under the seat Fuse leaving the battery under the seat, zero gauge wire to the bus bar and zero gauge ground from the battery to the frame and back to the bus bar. So now the reason we use the bus bar is to split the current across these three batteries. I'll show you in a second what the calculation is, how much current these bus bars can flow. So 
these two bus bars are equivalent to 30 zero gauge power and ground cables just these two bus bars so these bus bars at this thickness are able to flow 50,000 watts each or 5,000 amps of current so to do 5,000 amps of current each run of zero gauge is only good for 300 amps so it would be a lot of runs so using bus bars whenever you can gives you 10 times the current capacity and takes up less space if it's possible to run them so we have the two batteries linked together with the bus bar i didn't want to cut up the cable it's bad enough i already used hundreds of dollars worth of cables to do this quick little video so when it leaves the bus bar it goes through the fuse then it continues on into the tour pack so the first run would go to the first 5000 the second run fuse would go to the second 5000 the third run fuse would come up into the tour pack enter this fuse and go into the distribution block then this other zero gauge feed loops around and goes to the positive of the battery so this that's why these four-way fuse blocks have two zero gauge inputs because it links your battery banks together so this is battery bank one comes in fuse and protect the reason you need a fuse there and a fuse here is the power wires live flowing up to the tour pack if the wire gets shorted out or grounded anywhere between here and there that fuse would not protect the line coming from here to here that's why you need that fuse because this battery is back feeding power down into here so you're feeding power up and you're feeding power down so you need a fuse to protect up and you need a fuse to protect coming down so one line would need two fuses. The other two lines only need one fuse. The other lines only need one fuse because it leaves there and it goes to an amplifier. So if it shorts here, it blows the fuse. There's no power feeding back. So line number one goes to amplifier number one. Line number two goes to amplifier number two, each through a fuse. If the amp gets shorted here, it'll blow fuse number one. If it gets shorted here, it'll blow fuse number two. Fuse number three comes up and feeds the block that feeds the other battery. So that line needs to be protected because as soon as you hook up this battery and feed it through, it makes this line live back feeding down. So fuse on line number three, fuse on line number three entering, fuse block within 12 inches of the battery. So these fuses protect any line coming out of this battery. Then the power that feeds back this way is protected here and it goes down through the tail to there. Now from here, we're gonna go 2400.4 we're gonna go 800.4 using these cables and then we have two more fuses that we could use for LED lighting air ride anything else so doing it this way gives you fuse protection for this fuse protection for this and then two available one for air ride one for LEDs etc another amplifier but if we talk about power split and power distribution, 5,000 watt amp maxes the capacity of a single lithium battery. So most people do this wrong. And what they'll do is they'll jump all the batteries together with zero gauge, then jump this battery to those batteries at zero gauge, and then connect all the amplifiers to the fuse block in this battery. The issue is this battery's maximum capacity for burst is 5,000 watts. So it's 5,000 watts per battery. So we have this battery running the amplifiers in the tour pack. We have this battery running this 5,000. We have this battery running this 5,000. We have that battery running the bike and sharing its extra capacitance with this bank. So we get a little bit of power from the front battery. The three back batteries are tied together because of the bus bars flowing up to 50,000 watts if you needed it to. And we make sure that we can't overload the batteries because just these two batteries linked together through the bus bars give us a theoretical burst of 10,000 watts. Once we tie in this battery, it brings us to 15,000 watts. In order for it to work, we need to be able to flow enough current. So that's why we use the bus bars because it links the two batteries together and then this becomes one giant battery terminal. So instead of uh, 30 amp hours, we're at 60 amp hours on the bottom then you add this 30 and it brings you to 90. So now 90 amp hours can easily run 5,000, 5,000, 2,400, 800, easily. Now, if you just jump them together with zero gauge, remove the bus bars, 
then you would have to run the zero gauge all the way down and you would have to run double zero. Double zero power, double zero ground, because this amplifier can pull 500 amps of current. These lines can only sustain up to 300 amps of current. Since we have the bus bars, we're not limiting the jumps to 300 amps. If we jump it with all zero gauge, then that becomes 300 amp, 300 amp, 300 amp. Then this is trying to pull off this battery and this is trying to pull off this battery and exceeds the maximum current capacity of the battery because they're only tied together with a zero gauge highway, which is limited to 300 amps of current. That's why we split the load. That one goes to that battery. That one goes to that battery. That one gets tied to the output and becomes the battery for this. So all together we have a high current flow because of the bus bars. So if we remove the bus bars, we would have to do three zero gauge ground, jumping two batteries together on both sides. Then we would have to do the zero gauge feeds coming up to each amplifier. Then we would also need a double zero gauge feed coming up to this battery. And then we can go back into the block and then go to these two amps. So it'd be really, really tough to run all those wires from under the tail, up under the tour pack, into the tour pack, so, in a perfect world, you could fit a bus bar in app every application. In the motorcycle audio, it's really, really tough to do. That's why exactly Limitless includes these bus bars with their 56 amp hour retro battery. Because in order to flow the amount of current that these batteries can supply, just zero gauge to the terminal like this isn't going to do it. These aren't batteries. These are capacitors. So these are the batteries that run the car, and this is the capacitance bank to give it more dynamic peak power when it needs it. But Limitless makes these specifically for these batteries. That way you can link the batteries together. In this setup, we're doing, we're doing one big base amplifier. So two of the power leads go to this battery, two of the power leads go to this battery, and then we'll link the batteries together with double zero gauge. And then the cap bank, they're all jumped together, and then half the cat bank will go to this battery, the other half will go to this battery. We made these bus bars real quick just for the video. So we drilled it, drilled it, and then those are M6 bolts that bolt to the battery. These we drilled and tapped, and these are M8s. It was a pain in the ass to cut and drill this aluminum. I'll show you the video of Manny's golf cart. Well, Manny's a machinist metal fabricator. So uh, the work he did was crazy. His bus bar is really nice. <laughs> Mine are just something quickly I threw together. Uh, Maddie's bus bars are amazing. So uh, I'm gonna show you the chart. If you're gonna buy bus bars, I recommend these on Amazon because you could bolt the two batteries together here and here. And then these holes are already there so you could do all your connections.
to do it the way I did it. If you have the ability to mill your own, not and go for it. Uh, I recommend using copper. You could buy copper inexpensively on Amazon. So I have a couple of different bus bars to pick from. They also sell flat copper stock. So you just drill it and tap it. And I'm gonna show you the difference between how much electricity copper flows and how much electricity aluminum flows. So this is the bus bar calculator. This is the website. So you input the width and thickness of your bus bar. Our bus bars will do 7,200 amps in copper. Aluminum, it does 4,800. So that's why we use oxygen-free copper wire in the shop because as you can see, it's like a 40% difference in current flow. So to make the math easy, just say that copper flows double the amount of current than aluminum. Aluminum actually has copper in it. It has like 20 or 30% mm -hmm. copper. Um, Manny taught me that. So you can make your bus bars out of any of these materials. And as you can see, zero gauge wire flows 300 amps of current. Even the worst conductor, which is galvanized steel, still conducts 10 times the amount of current as zero gauge wire. So even using the worst, cheapest conductor, galvanized steel, you're still at 3,600 amps of current flow. If you're using zero gauge wire, it would be 300 amps, double zero, 600 amps. So even the worst, cheapest, thinnest metal conducts electricity better than stranded wire because of the concentration of solid metal. So if you were to calculate this eBay copper bar, so it's 25 by 305. We'll type that into the calculator. So that's uh, 9,000 amps of current. So we're talking 100,000 watts RMS. Off a couple of uh, a pair of $33 copper bus bars.